It's him and I, a and I. What's going on, YouTube? This is Marcos from the Quimini Press Watching, and I'm back again with another video. In this video, we're doing a return customer and we're doing a house wash. So let's go ahead and look around and see what we have. All right, looking around, the size of the house is not bad. And uh, look at the front, it's not bad. The overhangs on the major parts that we have to get clean on the front sides and probably on the sides. Look right here, we have some dirty gutters. We're gonna get underneath this area right here. We'll get the doors, the windows, Make sure that we wet down all of the bushes. It's more of a hang that's got some dirt. More at the top. On this side right here, it's not that bad. Now, on the back side, I guess this side is facing north. Uh, we do have a lot of algae build up. So this is the reason that I got the call to come out and do this house is because all this area right here is, has a lot of algae and the HOA is giving the homeowner um, a warning about getting this clean. This side right here is pretty dirty too. So that's the complete walk around on this house. Like I said, it's not that bad. I didn't see any uh, damage except for like right here and maybe a couple other spots. I'm just gonna look around the windows, make sure all of them are closed. No damaged windows, no damaged screens. Door down here, pretty clean. Yeah, so basically, I'm just inspecting everything. Looking at this area right here, make sure that should be good. Luckily, this is not really dirty, so we're going to kind of spray around this so we won't get any. Uh, in the fuse box don't use high pressure don't if you don't have to do not clean the power box stay away from it if you possibly can got some dirt and stuff built up at the bottom right here with ants a little damage right here Yep, all the windows and all the screens look like they're in good condition. Don't see nothing major sticking out. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and get unloaded and get started. All right, guys, I did this driveway and the sidewalk probably a year ago. If you wanna see that video, look up here in the corner and you can check that video out with me cleaning the driveway and the sidewalk. All right, guys, I got everything set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cranked up over here so we can go ahead and get this job over with. All right, guys, I'm gonna start off by watering down the plants. I hope y'all can hear me pretty good. I'm using a new microphone uh, for my iPhone right now. Um, I'm going to make a video of this on my other channel. So if y'all want to check out the video or see the, some of the other stuff that I do, go ahead and click in the link in the description for my other channel. We have a rose bush right here. I mean, I don't, I'm not using chemicals in the petals are falling off. 
So I'm pretty much let the customer know that, you know, we're going to, they may come out, but, you know, they'll grow back and stuff. Because they're right against the house. And in order for me to clean it, I have to um, spray chemicals around the bushes. I mean, I have to spray chemicals around this bush, but um, it's so close to the house, there's no way that I can really avoid getting some bleach or anything on it. Okay, I have all the plants watered down with water. I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, downstream injector into my bucket. I'm gonna go ahead and start rinsing the house off. Let's finish getting the top. Now, as you see this big window right here, what you want to do, you want to make sure that you rinse this window off real good. Uh, it doesn't have that much algae or anything on it. But uh, since it's getting direct sunlight, what's going to happen is it's going to have a lot of streaks and stuff if you don't rinse it good. So make sure that you rinse all your big windows off good, especially ones that's in direct sunlight. Because uh, the customer will see it and they'll call you back and you have to come back and clean. So I'm getting everything on the side of the house. I'm going to go back here and shoot these windows right here because, like I said, direct sunlight. So we don't want this stuff to really dry on it. So let's just keep it wet with some type of chemicals or either water. But... Since I'm letting everything getting, since I'm letting everything get killed by the chemicals, I'm gonna just go ahead and apply some more on it so that way it'll come clean. Right, guys what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna pull my chemical injector out now I'm just gonna rinse I'm not really rinsing I'm getting the rest of the uh, chemical out of the line so it's gonna take about 13 to uh, probably like 30 seconds to come all the way out and after it comes out I'm gonna go ahead and start Water down 
the plants again. Okay, that should be enough time to get the uh, line clear. I'm watering down the plants. Like I said, I'm going to, you know, let the customer know, like, when plants are like this near the house, most likely the buds and stuff are going to fall off because you, you are applying chemicals on it. Um, but if none of them fall off, that'd be good. But just let them know, hey, it's nothing you can really do when you use the chemicals and the plants are that close. And anything that senses as far as uh, plants, uh, the leaves will fall off. Or either the buds if they have like rose bushes or something. Okay guys, I'm looking at it. It seems like it's pretty clean. I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the rinse now. I'm starting my way from the top. And rinse down. It doesn't make sense to rinse from the bottom because you're going to be rinsing the dirt back where you just washed. So start from the top and when you do the rinse. And if y'all don't know, I'm using my 3% mix like normal, downstreaming. And I'm using my J-Rod to apply the chemicals and to rinse this off. So now I'm getting to make sure I'm getting this window real good. Now with my J-Rod, I'm going to switch to a wide fan. Still using low pressure, guys. You don't want to use high pressure on houses. Since I'm rinsing the house off, I'm going to hit these bushes again. And notice on this front door, I put chemicals on it. That's because it has a storm door and it's aluminum. I don't have to worry about the paint fading anything because it's not a wood door. So that's the reason I went ahead and put chemicals on this door directly. Because it's not a wood door and I don't have to worry about leaving it in the streets or even uh, stripping it in the paint. Believe it or not, guys, this house didn't look dirty, but there's a lot of dirt coming off. All right, on this big one, I'm going to make sure I clean this good. Right. Go ahead and clean the rest of the house right here in this section, and I'm going to go ahead and hit another coat of water on this window again. Because, like I said, you don't want to leave streets, and the only way you're not going to do that, you got to clean it.
All right, guys, we're going to do this side of the house. Now we're going to go ahead and put our chemical ejector back in. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and apply the chemical to this side of the house. And while this is dwelling right here, I'm going to go back and water down the bushes again and hit those front windows again so make sure that I don't leave in the streets. All right, here we go. Squeeze the trigger for about 20 to 30 seconds to get the soap to come through. All right, there goes the soap, so that means my bleach is coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the rest of the house. Me personally, I like to start from the bottom and go all the way to the top. It doesn't really matter, guys. Uh, the only time it really matters is when you rinsing this down. You want to definitely rinse from the top down to the bottom. And notice I'm going around this power box. I'm not spraying on the power box or anything. I'm just going around it. So if anything hits it, it's just going to be just from the wind blowing onto it. But I'm not applying no chemicals straight to it. All right, I got that little portion. Let me get this down here. That overhang, you want to definitely make sure you get that because that's where your really dirty parts are. And then right here, I just come back and rinse down. Light coat. Okay, I got everything on the side of the house. I'm going to let that dwell for a few minutes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take my chemical ejector out, come back and spray this a little bit, and then I'm going to go back and spray the bushes. All right, I got my chemical, I got my chemical injector out of the bucket. I'm going to clear my line. Like I said, this side wasn't bad. That look like my line is clear. Now, I usually don't clean the foundation on houses and stuff because it splash a lot of mud and stuff up. But um, you can do it. It doesn't take that much. You just go ahead, go across it with your white tip or a green tip. That's when you're going to use your high pressure tips on the house is when you clean the concrete and bricks. Outside of that, do not use high pressure on houses. So right now I'm going to go ahead, water the bushes down, and I'm going to come back, hit the bottom part with um, the white tip or either a green, green tip. Gonna hit these windows again real quick with a quick rinse. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. I just don't want to make sure there's no soap on now. But I'm gonna show you the soap that I'm using on this house. Um, and the reason being, you can, like I said, a lot of people use dish soap or laundry detergent. I heard that laundry detergent is better because it works better with the bleach. But I'm going to show you what I'm using on the house wash. All right, guys. So I'm finished with the front. I got the bushes watered down three or four times. And I got the windows clean at least three or four times. All right. So on the bottom part right here of the house, I'm going to go ahead and take my white tip and we're going to clean the bottom I had to hit that real quick because it got ants right here all 
All right, that's clean. All right, guys, so I don't know if you can see it or not, but the main reason I don't like cleaning the concrete on houses because it has red dirt that pops up and get on the house. So now you got to clean that off. So that's the first thing I'm gonna concentrate on doing is make sure I get all that red dirt that I splashed up on the house because red dirt, rust stains are hard to remove. So I can see a little rust right here on the side. But yeah, the ants and stuff right here. So yeah, when I was cleaning this area over here, I was trying to get the red dirt off over here while I just splashed up. See all that red dirt popping up off the side? That's because of the ant here that's right here. And there's no ants in it. Matter of fact, you see how the dirt is coming out of the side of the house? I think the ants have put something inside the house and stuff. So let's hope it's not going to uh, affect me and rinse it out. All right, everything looks clean. It's looking white. So I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning it off. Once again, I'm starting at the top because that's the way I'm, I'm rinsing the dirt down to the bottom. I'm getting all the overhang. And after I get through cleaning the overhang, I start on the house rinsing it down. You don't have to hit every board because since you're starting at the top, the water is rinsing down. So I'm just kind of hitting every board, but I'm also moving a lot faster than I would if I was just trying to get a certain area. Because right now, all the water is flowing straight down to the bottom. So it's rinsing it off. And what I'm doing behind it is just make sure I'm not leaving in the streets. Yes, you can leave streets on houses. And the reason you can do that is because you're probably rinsing the house out from the bottom and then you're going work your way up. So rinse from the top down to the bottom. That way you won't have in the streets. And I'm still noticing red dirt coming out of that. And that's this area right here. I'm not putting no pressure in that box. But I'm just going around it. And that's it. Okay, guys, let's move y'all a little closer to this end. All right, again, I'm going to start at the top, work my way down. And notice I'm using a, a narrow stream. But also notice I'm back probably like 10 to 15 feet from the house, too. If I wanted to get closer to the house and rinse, I switch my J-Rod out to a fan tip right here. And now I can get closer. So if you don't have a J-Rod, you go get one. I'm going to leave it in the link in the description so you can find a J-Rod so you see exactly what I'm using. And if you want to go get one, go ahead and order it. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for this side of the house. We've done the front. So the only thing we got left is the back and the other side. So let's go ahead and get everything set up over there. And then we're going to get through this job. Like I said earlier in the video, this is the uh, soap that I'm using in my house wash. This is a bleach additive and it says roof and house wash. And I got this from my supplier in Atlanta. Um, you can go online. You can find some type of house wash and roof wash uh soap that you can use on houses the difference between this and this soap is the this soap is a good chance that you can leave streaks on windows it's not going to look good and stuff like that this right here cleans a little bit better it also um it's a bleach additive so it's not going to uh make the bleach strength goes down as you're using it it just basically is going to enhance it help the bleach stick to the house a little bit better and after you get 
all the soap and stuff onto the house and rinse it off, it's going to rinse clean. So if you can go out and just look for you a bleach additive or a house wash mix from your pressure wash store or either find it online somewhere. Okay, guys, I want to show you this. See how dirty that overhang is? I'm just giving you a close look at it because I'm giving you a close look at the overhang because, like I said, it's a bit different when you see it when it uh, after I clean it. All right, look at it right there. Uh, look at all that dirt right there on the side of the chimney and mold. All that's going to come off with the wash. All right, so make sure that you stick around to see the transformation of this house. This is the bad side, which is the back of the house. All this mold and algae that growed up on it. I'm going to get the chairs and stuff off the way. So, like I said, you're going to see the after, after I get finished with the job. All right, so now that I got that done, I'm going to go ahead and get you set up again. And we're going to start applying the chemical to this side and the side of the house over here. All right, guys, I got you set up. For the back portion of the house where we're going to apply the chemicals i'm going to crank up the fresh wash and we're going to go ahead and get this uh soap applied it's an inch right there so i gotta watch that make sure it don't get on my hose and crawl up my arm and eat me up all right we're going to go ahead put our j-rod back on and we're going to start applying the soap get these couple of chairs out the way All right, here we go. Let it run for like 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds until you start seeing soap come out. There's my soap. Now I can go ahead and start applying to the rest of the house. One thing about that soap additive, it's limited, it has a limited smell to it. So I smell the lemons coming out. Normally, you have to smell the bleach coming out to know if your bleach is coming out. But with this additive, I just smell lemons. Well, I want to say it's lemons added to it. It's got a lemony scent to it. So what I'm going to do right here to kind of show you how the chemicals is working, we're just going to do this half of the house. And then I'm going to come back and show you the other half that I didn't do. So that's all the soap and stuff applied to it. All right, so we're gonna let that dwell a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do the side over here. That way we can go ahead and get this job finished. All right, I'm trying to set y'all up so y'all won't be in the sun, which is gonna be kind of hard to do. Let me trap them over here. There we go. That's a little better. Let's go ahead and get this knocked out. Guys, I hope y'all liking this video with me doing a little narration through the video. If you do, make sure you hit that like button down at the bottom of the screen. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I love to get a lot more subscribers. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. I try to get back with you. I try to answer all my questions dealing with pressure washing and anything y'all want to know. So go ahead and leave a comment below. Right here, guys, this area is full of red dirt. Unless I put a little bit of pressure or some kind of chemical on it to clean it, it's not coming off. All right, let's get this top a little bit better.
All right, we're going to let that dwell a little bit. And notice this side of the house has the bush right there on the edge. So I got to make sure that I water that bush down. All right, it's been about four or five minutes since I applied a chemical to the house. Let's see what it looks like. There's the before. So you can see a little bit better. Let's zoom in. That's the before. Get out of the sun. This is the after. So it's been five minutes and that stuff is coming clean. Look at the top up there. That's already coming clean too. So that's your before and after. Right here. Kind of splashed over before and after. Five minutes, guys. Don't take that much to do. This is a 3% mix downstream. So it's not, it's not like that you've got to have a whole bunch of strong chemicals to wash a house. You just want it strong enough to kill and get the house clean. Don't overdo it with the chemicals. All right, so I showed you that. I'm going to go ahead and apply the rest of the chemicals to this side right here. And then we're going to get ready to wrap everything up by doing the rinse down. All right, guys, so go ahead and get this crank back up and get this done. Got to steer clear of the ants. So the customer let me know that she had an issue with the door. And somebody else pressure washed and they had soap and stuff all into the house. When you come across, when you come across a case like that, what you need to do, now watch what I do when I get to this door. First, I'm gonna clean everything around it. I'm not spraying on the door. Okay. From my understanding, it's around the seals. If you use a high pressure, of course, it's going to go inside the seals. This is soft wash. So I'm standing back a little bit farther and I'm just going to run my one across it very lightly. And I don't need to drench it because it's going to get inside the house. So that's what you don't want to do. So bleach going inside the house and they have like a different color carpet. You're going to mess up the carpet. So make sure that you be careful around doors and stuff, especially when customers say that they have like bad seals. All right, guys, just did have enough to finish the house. All right, now that I got the house, chemicals applied on the house, I'm gonna take my white tip and we're gonna go across the bottom again right here. So guys, let me correct myself. 
I said that I didn't clean the concrete or bricks down at the bottom. I do clean that, but if it's like maybe two or three inches from the ground, I don't clean it. This is almost like a whole foot. If you don't clean this, it's going to stick out. So that's the reason I clean it. But normally when I get across houses with um, concrete at the bottom, it's like two or three inches. And you're not going to really see a difference in it because it's going to make a bigger mess. Switch my fan tip. I'm gonna get a little closer. All right, guys, I'm stopping right here because you remember I did half of this house on this side and then do this side um, at all. So I'm going to let that dwell a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and get the side knocked out and then we're going to come back and do the rest of the back of the house. All right, let's go. I'm wet this bush real quick. Now I'll probably go back and wet the bushes in the front again just because. All right, start at the top and work our way down. A lot of red dirt come from up there. That's probably from the builders or something when they build the house. And this house is gotta be at least 20 years old and I'm still getting red dirt coming off the building. Go figure. All right, switch notes in the fan. And the reason I like using the fan when I'm washing down, I just cover more area faster. So right here on the side of the house, it was some um, like wax or something, candle wax or grease. Uh, I'm surprised it came clean, um, but it's completely off. It may be a little bit of residue, but it's not much. Again, a lot of red dirt stuff at the bottom. Let's see if we can clean this with the J-Rod. I really don't like it, so let's go ahead and get the white tip. And then we just got to go back and rinse all the red dirt off of the side of the house after I get finished. All right, that's the best we're going to get that. Go back to the J-Rod, we're going to use the fan tip. We're going to rinse everything down. Look at all that mud. Guys, I could probably be here for weeks and still probably couldn't get all that mud out. And like I said, it's red stains right here.
Now, you seen the video when I had a house with red stains. Click on the link in the description right over there so you can go ahead and check that video out and watch me get rid of red mud off the side of the house. I still see some algae. I still see some algae on the back of the house. I might have to uh, apply some more chemicals to the back. Like I said, the back side was the worst side of the house. But we won't do that until we rinse the house off because a lot of this stuff could just come off with the rinsing. So I'm going back and get the windows good. This is not a window cleaning, guys. So you have to rinse the windows off real good because if not, like I said, you're gonna leave streaks and they're gonna call you back. That's it for the side of this house. Let's go ahead and get the back part. All right, we're gonna start at the top. Work our way down. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna have to apply a little bit more chemical to it because I'm looking at this chimney. It's still dirty. So I'm gonna do a rinse and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some more uh, chemical to it. Side of the chimney came pretty clean, just this back side facing north. The overhang is looking nice. Yeah, I'm looking at the windows, those are clean, no streaks. All right, switching to my fan tip. Again, around this door, I gotta watch. I don't want nothing to go inside the house, so I clean around the window. Around the other side of the door. All right, and then just go over the door lightly. All right, that's all I can do. I still see a little bit of black mold, but since I'm going to hit the chimney and stuff again, we'll hit that again, too. We're just going to let all the chemical kill everything. We're not going to use any kind of pressure. All right, I'm out of chemicals, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a little bit more chemical at 3%. I'm holding up two fingers at 3%. Uh, that way we can do this back side of the house again to make sure that we kill everything. All right, guys, I got my uh, mix already done. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the whole house on the back side because that was the worst side. And hopefully it's gonna come clean this time.
trying to stay out of those ants. Again, around the door, light. Real light, nothing heavy, because you don't want to go inside the house. Oh yeah, that's real bad up there. So we're gonna soak this one a little bit better. All right, I ain't gonna keep spraying it. What I'm gonna do is let that dwell a little bit. I'm gonna let that dwell a little bit. I'm gonna continue to apply the chemical to the rest of the back side of the house. And then I'm gonna come back and hit it again. This side came pretty clean, but I'm just spraying it anyway. I'm not even gonna really put a whole bunch of time into this side. It's just around the chimney and the side of the house on the on the uh, right side of the chimney that was real bad that I needed to apply some more chemical. Get that door again. Now, I know that the top of the chimney was real bad. It's starting to fade. So, I'm gonna hit it again. We're just right at the top, guys. So I'm gonna let that work a little bit. Yep, it's starting to come off. I just pulled my hose out of my downstream. So I'm just applying the last little bit to the back of the house right there. Hit this real quick. All right, so we're gonna let that dwell a little bit on the house, maybe like five minutes or so. Um, but yeah, this is a returning customer. I have a video where I did this little concrete pad right here. We'll go ahead and leave a link to that video right here in the corner. And also, like I said before, when I first got here, I did the sidewalk and I did the driveway. Go back and check those videos out too. All right, we're gonna let these dwell a little bit and then we'll come back and do the rinse. Okay guys, it's been about five minutes, so it's time to do the rinse. Let's go ahead and get the pressure washer cranked up. And then we're gonna start that in, work our way this way. I'm looking at the top of the chimney. All that algae and mold and stuff that was on there, it's gone. So we just got to do the rinse now.
All right, guys, I'm done with the job. Let's go ahead and take a look around and see the final results. All right, guys, here it is. It's the final walkthrough. And let's look at everything, see how if this, everything's clean and white. All oh, that looks nice. All oh, this is white now. It was dirty. Had mold and stuff built up on it. The gutters right here. Did not get a gutter cleaning, so that's an extra charge. So that right there is this looks like that the way it is. It is clean, but you have to do a gutter brightening just get that clean completely. But as far as the rest of the house, nice and white, nice and clean, no dirt, no mold. And this is starting to dry, guys. So this is going to look a little bit cleaner than the back side look at this area right here all that's clean it's white this is white up there also is white nice and clean guy you can't complain about how a house wash looks when you use a 3% mix downstream. And notice that glass right here, it's clean. There's no streaks because, there's no streaks on that um, window because I made sure I rinsed it off good. So that's the reason it looks clean like it does. Same over there. Let's go on this side. This is starting to dry, but it's also clean. All across the top right there is clean. Down in the bottom, the red dirt. I got the red dirt off the brick and stuff. See how white that looks now. But like I said, if it was like maybe two or three inches above the, um, you know, below the siding, then I wouldn't have cleaned that because it's going to make a mess. I didn't bother getting that area right there because all that is an ant hill. It's going to make a bit mess if I try to clean that up. So again, came pretty clean even though like i said dealing with red dirt and clay up there it's clean now the back side was the worst side it's still kind of wet but we can look at it and you notice that everything is clean on here let's get a little closer so you can take a look at it no mold no algae all the window sills are pretty clean now, one thing when I clean the windows, what I do is spray, I spray the screens, but it, all the dirt and stuff is trapped in here. So what I usually do is just push it to one side or the other. And then if the customer want to clean the inside of it, they can by just going and open the windows and cleaning it out. But other than that, it's pretty clean. No high pressure here. This door is now a little bit wider and stuff. I couldn't put a lot of chemicals on it guys because like I said it's leaking on the inside so we just did the best we could the chimney look at the chimney at the top all oh, that's clean now it's no mold or mildew uh build up on it so we're good now down back at the bottom also clean this side right here it was one of the worst sides too look at it it is all clean nothing built up on it around the side still a little wet but it's coming starting to dry a little bit all that's clean get close to the house so you can't be blinded by the sun the overhang it's all clean Zoom back out. Garage door is clean. And we're back around front again. Let's take a look at these bushes. Now, remember I wet the bushes down and the roses, like I said, they're starting to dry up a little bit. You see how the rose petals are drying up because I applied bleach to the area. So need to let sure make sure that the customer know that that could happen. This side over here didn't really do as bad. They are 
drying up a little bit, but they're still hanging on. But I'm pretty sure they're going to eventually fall off. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you found it entertaining. If I'm looking like Michael Jackson over here with this one glove. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you found it entertaining. If not, at least I hope that you learned something from it. If you didn't, go back and look at the video because you skipped over the good parts. Once again, if you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell so you know when my next video comes out. This is Marcos from Equipment Eye Pressure Washing, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. It's him and I, Equipment Eye.